أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا سيرات المستقيم سيرات الذين أن أمت عليهم غير المكذوب عليهم ولا دوالين آمين لإيلا في كرش إيلا في مريلة الشتاء والصيف فليعبدوا رب هذا البلد الذي أتامن أم بن يوم وأمن أم بن أوف This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushonamo, where we speak truth to power. And I would like to say, Ramadan Karim, Hai Ramadan to all Muslims. Blessed is the man that walketh not near the counsel of the heathen, and sitteth in the seat and is can't follow. But his delight is in the love of the Lord, and in this Lord I see, I get it sunrise and sundown. He may go dear like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth fat fruit in the season. Him live never ago wither, and whatsoever him do shall prosper. Yay! The heathen them now, they saw them dear like a chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the heathen them never go tan upon judgment, and the sinner man them in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord God, Jah, love the way of the I just and the way I see them and them always and always. I will perish. Let the people of the Most High God say, Jo! Kadama we gruma be a tila e. Higzag beer. Tana istalina bashante shante shante shante. Kadama we gruma be a tila e. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Members say where twos and trees meet in the name of the most I ja are there so ja ja de. If Jaja never build up your house, the builder I go build it in vain. Same way if Jaja never watch upon your house, the white man I go watch it in vain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it and them is safe. Many are the afflictions for righteous, but Ja shall deliver him from all of them. And I give thanks. Our mouths of all this are done water, and a sick player for members say. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High Jah shall therein abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I and I give thanks. I and I give thanks. Oh, I and I give thanks. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. In my name, Black Rastana in every traditional African home, there is a black pot. And each time this black pot sits on the fire, so many ingredients, different shapes, different sizes, different aromas, oh, and even different colors. Put aside all these differences and relocate into the black pot. Be subjected to some amount of heating and they produce very sumptuous dishes. Now the food that is produced by the black pot and the ingredients does not even benefit the ingredients, nor the black pot, but rather benefits us as a people. But every time, the black pot and the ingredients will never check their responsibility to produce food. Selflessly, this food would always be produced. Now the black pot is so symbolical of the African continent. And the ingredients represent us as a people. We must collaborate so that we'll be able to produce development for our people, our continent, our land. It doesn't matter whether we enjoy this food or not, whether we benefit directly from this food or not. The most important thing is that we are working for posterity. We are generationally thinking. Even if we don't enjoy it now, the next generations would come and enjoy that. It's like planting trees. We might not live long enough to benefit from the shade of the trees. But who cares? Other people planted trees and we are enjoying the shades. Today they are not here with us. We are still enjoying the shade of the trees. 
if the next generations and other generations to come will benefit from our planting of trees? Why worry? This is the black pot, aka Kukushunemo. And here we speak truth to power. We are live on Pan African TV, Africa's only Pan African TV. And we are seen all over the world via the power of satellite. We are also on Loud Silence TV, Super Live on Black Empire TV. And our numbers are scrolling on the screen. Please pick up the numbers and do business with us. Your business will help us stay and be able to propagate the message of Africa. Yes, we are also on YouTube. Our name is Black Empire Media. Do me a favor. Please subscribe to our YouTube page. Yes, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called the Black Empire Media. And then you click on the notification button. We have another channel in there. And it's called the African History Class, where we unleash only African history. Yes, this is the black pot. Make sure you subscribe to that one too and click on the notification button. Now, we have a number of stories to share with you today. And the first one is heartbreaking. Number one, we're going to Nigeria. A, Nigerian politician in UK human organ trafficking. Who is this? Nigerian politician. Oh, this man's face is familiar. He looks like Ike. Ike Ekwere Madu. Yes, a former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate. Am I correct? It looks like him. Ike Ekwere Madu. Am I correct? So, is he the one involved in this? Let's be very careful. This is a very powerful politician in Nigeria. If we don't get the facts right, we would be in trouble. His wife is also included. Wow. This is the wife. Mm. There's a third person. What are the facts here? Let's watch. Watch the story. It says Nigerian politician, wife and doctor convicted for trafficking human organs in the UK. Nigerian what? Politician convicted in the UK. For what? Human organ trafficking. The politician, his wife, and doctor. Wow. What are the facts? Come in. A popular Nigerian politician, Ike Ekwerimandu, all right, I got it right, has been convicted together with his wife and a doctor for engaging in organ trafficking. The 60-year-old former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate, his wife, 56, and the said doctor, Dr. Obina Obeta, 51, are said to have conspired to facilitate the travel of... 21 year old Lagos Street trader to London with the intent of exploiting him for his kidney. Now, all these people sought to get the young man whose name is withheld for legal reasons to become a donor for the senator's daughter who was sick. A report by UK supporter, the Guardian.com, said. The senator's daughter, Sonia Ekwerimadu, reportedly had a kidney disease which forced her to drop out of Newcastle University where she was pursuing a master's degree in film. Breaking down the details of the incident, prosecutor Hugh Davis Casey told the court that in February 2022, the man was sent to the Royal Free Hospital in London where he was falsely presented to a private renal unit as a cousin of Sonia, the senator's daughter, so that they could an 80,000 euro transplant. The medical secretary at the hospital was then paid to act as an Igbo translator. Listen, the medical secretary at the hospital was then paid to act as an translator between the parties, that's the man and the doctors, to help convince them that he was a selfless donor. 
the prosecutor further told the court that Ikwere Madu, his wife and the doctor hmm, treated the dead man and other potential donors as disposable assets, spare parts for reward. And then entered an emotionally cold commercial transaction with him. Mm. The prosecutor Davis further noted that the senator who owned several properties and had a staff of eight days by this act agreed to reward someone for a kidney for his daughter, someone in circumstances of poverty and from whom he distanced himself and made no enquiries with whom for his own political protection he wanted no direct contacts. Davis added, what he agreed to do was not simply expedient in the clinical interest of his daughter Sonia. It was exploitation. It was criminal. It is no defense to say he acted out of love for his daughter. Her clinical needs cannot come at the expense of the exploitation of somebody in poverty. His actions were against Nigeria's laws against organ trafficking, which he, Ekwere Madu, helped draw up. The prosecutor maintained, adding that it sowed entitlement, dishonesty, and hypocrisy. Oh, the prosecutor told the jury. Wow. After a six-week trial at the Old Bailey on Thursday, March 23, the jury found them guilty of conspiring to bring the 21-year-old Lagos street trader to London for exploitation and for defying modern slavery legislation. His daughter, however, was declared not guilty. Now, what's the background to this whole story? It was gathered that medics at the London Free Hospital, yes, the London Royal Free Hospital, rejected the man, saying he was not suitable, was not a suitable match for Sonia. During a cross-examination, Ekwere Madu was asked why he did not find a suitable match amongst his family members. Ekwere Madu responded saying, it wasn't an option for him. Prosecutor Hugh Davis KC quizzed Ekwere Madu why he failed to ask one of the specialists he consulted at the Royal Free Hospital if one of his family members could donate a kidney. The former senator said he had limited intelligence, although the prosecutor described, the prosecutor, in fact, he wanted to say, described his response as false. The judge asked Ikwere Madu why he did not ask one of his daughter's cousins to donate rather than risk a person he is unaware of. He responded that he made an agreement through agents to recruit a donor and would donate a kidney to his daughter, uh, a donor who would donate a kidney to his daughter for a reward. Ikwere Madu also denied trying to transfer his daughter, from the UK hospital to Turkey to seek medical care under the transplant. He, he told the court that he was the victim of a scam. His wife, Beatrice, denied any knowledge of the alleged conspiracy. However, WhatsApp messages showed, in fact, shown to the court revealed that Obeta charged the Okore Madu 4.5 million Nigerian Naira, an equivalent of about 8,000 pounds sterling, made up of an agent fee and a donor fee. And Obeta is the daughter, doctor. Ekwere Madu and Obeta admittedly, in fact, admitted falsely claiming the man was Sonia's cousin in his visa application and in documents presented to the hospital. The judge said Ekwere Madu failed to heed, uh, to heed, in fact, H W E D, to heed uh, his medical advice to find a donor for his daughter among genuine family members. He said, at no point in time was there ever any intention for a family member close, medium, or distance to do what could be paid for from a pool of donors. Oh my God. 
come here. So this is wickedness. The Nigerian senator, former senator, former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate, he himself is former senator. He has so much money, several properties all over Nigeria and beyond. His daughter is schooling at Newcastle University, studying film. She falls sick, kidney disease. Instead of looking amongst the vast Nigerian family members that they have, our families in Africa are normally very wide. It's not all about the father, mother, and children, as it is in Europe and the Americas. It goes beyond just father, mother, and children. We have uncles, we have cousins, 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 sisters, brothers. All these are part of the family, and we know each and every member of the family. He didn't. Why? Because he did not want to endanger the life of any of his close family members. So he went out on the street to exploit. Don't get it wrong. It's his daughter. Family members could have donated so that at least you know that this family member has his kidney with my daughter. Was it a way of trying to avoid any future quarrels where somebody would say, okay, I donated a kidney to your daughter. Every day I'm coming to take money from you. Give me this. Give me that. If you don't, I'm going for my kidney from your daughter. Or a situation where the daughter comes on TV to give a speech and somebody sits in the crowd and says that she's carrying my kidney, as we have heard in other stories. You will not have your peace. Once you have taken a kidney from one man for yourself or any of your family members, he's always trailing you and reminding you that, remember that he has his kidney with your daughter or your family member. Was that why he didn't want to risk it? But he went out on the streets to exploit poor people. He chose a Nigerian street vendor, probably selling Mijingoru and those they call Aboki on the streets of Nigeria. Selling Mijingoru and Goron Tula. Come, how much do you earn a day? Oh, this. I can give you this amount. I'll let you travel. We'll go proper doctors. Or Igbo doctors will take care of you. They will do this. They will operate and do this and do this. They will not even give him enough information. The fact that they are taking him abroad. Obodo Igbo. Once he arrives there, his life is going to change. And the story says what? They entered into a cold, heartless, empty agreement. I'm taking you abroad. If you agree, I'll take you abroad. But my daughter is sick and I need somebody who can do A, B, C, D. They will not give you the correct picture of the thing. Now imagine how it was all perpetrated. How did they do it? A doctor was picked up. Oh, this person, if we want him to speak, he might let the cat out of the bag. So we will get an interpreter and make sure that this person doesn't speak English. So we have to find somebody who would interpret what he says. So he might not necessarily be interpreting what this person is saying. He would be saying what would be politically right for that thing. But fortunately for the 21-year-old Nigerian street trader, his kidney did not match that of the daughter. And doctors are surprised. Why? Couldn't you have picked this from any of your family members? Mm -hmm. Because if you are close family, the chances of your kidney matching will be great. But this person, then the cat was let out of the bag. Bam! Messages, left, right and center. It ended up in court. And senator is in trouble. My brother, much as we would say that the senator loves his daughter so much, he behaved heartlessly. He took advantage of a poor person. And he decided that he would take advantage of this person, probably even destroy the person 
for fear that the person might come back at him later. Imagine, this is a former senator, a former deputy president of the Nigerian Senate. Very powerful. You know what that means? It's almost like saying the deputy speaker of parliament. He's powerful just in the same kind of ranks. He has so much property. But instead of going to look for a kidney of love, he went to look for a kidney of exploitation. Do you want the kidney of a man that is full of love? Or you want a kidney that has been exploited? He doesn't even love his daughter. Because I, if I were in his position, better still, if I were in the daughter's position, I would reject any kidney, unless that kidney is coming from a loved one. Somebody that I would be happy to hug up and say that, wow, I share part of your body inside me. But he doesn't care. He has money. Money can do everything. He went out to exploit a Nigerian street trader selling gold on Tula and Mijungoru in a wheelbarrow. These are the people who make African politics look so demonic. He's an evil man. Very wicked man. He has been able to make so much money. So whoever doesn't have money, it's not his business. It's a curse. The person is lazy. So he has to exploit the person. His daughter is schooling in England. Yet the Nigerian people that they make laws for, a lot of them are in the ghettos doing 419. A lot of them have become armed robbers. A lot of them have become part of terrorism groups. All because of the dirty politics and the corruption that Nigerian politicians are involved in. Nigerian politicians are one of the most corrupt politicians in the world. And it is not the system that is making them correct, corrupt. It is these people who are corrupting the system. When you go into Nigeria and you hear this is a, sen this is a senator. Senator. The whole area, everybody is going to him to try and get something from him. So they turn them into demigods. And to be able to fit into the demigod status, they steal from the same people. So it becomes a routine system of exploitation and foolishness. The people never get rich. These are the people who make all the money stealing from the same people and giving them peanuts. It's like you steal a cow from me. And then I come to you, and then you give me the hoof of the cow to go and eat. Next time, I come again, steal another cow. When you come, I give you a hoof and pretend that I'm doing you a favor. It's a whole routine of foolishness, exploitation, and wickedness. It's also happening in the West. The West does the same thing to Africa. Would we'll come and exploit and steal from Africa. And when Africa needs a certain kind of aid, Instead of giving us back what they stole from us, no. They give us the hoof of the cow that they stole from us and ask us to come and manage. Till they come stealing another cow, then we get another hoof. Nigerian politician in UK, human trafficking, organ trafficking. Heartless people. I pray that this man will be dealt with properly. The doctor will be dealt with properly. The wife will be dealt with properly. As for the daughter, I pray that somebody with a genuine heart will go and donate a kidney so that she will live to tell a story someday. I don't know how she would look at the father, whether she will see the father as a loving father or an exploitative father. I will see such a father as an exploitative father. You just go out there and pay some poor people on the street, take advantage of them, exploit them, and bring them to England to destroy their lives. I'm glad this time it didn't work. This is the Black Pot, a.k.a. Kukushunamu, where we speak truth to power.
next story. This next story is going to be very brief. It says, price of appetite, beer, to go up. Those of you who drink appetite, burukutu, kebasho, the price is about to go up. Those of you who eat pork, the price is also going up. In Ghana, we have so many different names for pork. Some call it Charles. Some call it Kwe. Some call it just anything. My brother, my sister, if there's any poison that is sold freely on the market and people wholeheartedly buy this poison and poison themselves, then it's appetition and beer. When human beings believe that they have to be happy, then they start drinking alcohol. I am happy that the prices are going up. Some of the drinkers of appetite and beer will not be able to afford it. So they will start drinking water. So now you go to the party. Instead of having the bottles go, pss, pss, you are having water poured. And people are drinking. That is what will happen. Somebody has another idea. He says, if you don't have money for beer, what should you do? He says, if you have no money for beer, if beer is too expensive, what do you do? He says, drink water. This is the man, Maxwell Kofi Juma. He gave his daughter to the president's son to marry. So he's an in-law to the president. Watch it. He says, drink water if the cost of alcohol is expensive. Managing director of Gihok, Maxwell Kofi Juma, has asked individuals who think that the increase in the prices of alcoholic beverages was high to stop drinking alcohol. He stated that the state-owned company will continue to increase the prices of alcoholic beverages and persons who cannot afford should drink water. Dash! And come here. He has spoken the truth. Why would the prices of alcohol and all those things increase? You know why? It's because these are luxuries. What are luxurious products? They are products that are not necessities. A necessity is a product that you need, not you want. People will still survive if they do not drink beer. People will still survive and live well if they don't drink appetition. So putting taxes on this, like Zeros products, will help us make money and will help cut down the number of people drinking beer and appetition. A lot of people don't drink beer all because it's expensive. So when you reduce the price, you will include them in the catchment area of beer drinkers. It is good. But why is the nation increasing the price of beer, appetition, and even some soft drinks? Soft drinks, non-alcoholic beverages, fizzy drinks, carbonated drinks. I'm going to tell you more. Listen, come here. Watch it. All about it. Three new revenue measures to be considered by Parliament. Hold it there. Why are they going to Parliament? Now, we were told that any government that will go to the IMF has failed. Kennedy Japan mentioned it and made it clear. And I believe in that. We voted for you because we believe that you'll be able to deal with the problems of the economy. If you haven't failed, why do you go for external forces to come and advise you on how to run the economy? You must be an idiot. It doesn't make sense. We brought you in. You are such a wonderful team to be able to deal with the economy. All of a sudden, you are going to the IMF. They are coming in to tell you, do this, do this, don't do this, don't do that. Cut here, cut there, pump here, pump there, stop this. Hey, hey, like that. And you were like, like a zombie 
running left, right, and center, puppets on a string. If you're not an idiot, why would you subject yourself to such a mockery? And Kennedy Japan did not mean swears. Kennedy Japan is an MP. The MP for North Tong. Did I say North Tong? No. That's Ablakwa. And he's been in the news all these days. North Tong MP. Ablakwa, wherever you are, I salute you and I greet you. But I'm talking about Kennedy and Japan. Asin Central MP. He wants to run for president right now. And he said, some time ago, and he came back to defend it recently. He said, yes, his government has failed. He said, any government that will run to the IMF is a failed government. So when his own government went there, he said it's a failed government. Why should we keep a failed government here? That means the whole government has failed. The whole party has failed. So we must have fresh elections. Straight, because it's a failed government. But these dirty people in government are still running around that they want to fix the economy using the IMF and the World Bank. And IMF said, hey, before we help you, tighten up this, tighten up that, and tighten up that. Squeeze up this, squeeze up that before we can help you. And strangely, they are not even able to meet the criteria to fail. Going to the IMF is tantamount to failing. They are not even able to meet the criteria to fail. So now, IMF is telling them, do this and do that. One of the things they have to do to meet the criteria would be to raise money from taxes. And these taxes would go on some of these things that I mentioned. Beer, appetite, soft drinks, talking about carbonated drinks, fizzy drinks, and so on and so forth. I am glad because these are the things that kill people. Appetite, beer, pork, meat. And in this country, it looks like we have been cursed with pork. If you go to a party and there's no pork there, people are walking out. Even Muslims have started eating pork. Some Muslims. Hey! Go to the Muslim areas. Muslim dominated communities. When Ramadan comes. Like today. All the beer bars are empty. The people who drink beer right now. Are not even the Christians. The Catholics. Is the Muslims. The standards have lowered so much to the ground that now, if you don't drink, they say your eyes are not opened. You don't know what's up, you know? So, prices are coming up. Keep drinking. When the prices go higher and higher, we shall see if you keep drinking. It's a good thing. I do not support the IMF, but I support taxes on some of these things. Cigarettes, Shisha, pork, and even meat in general. Why should you eat meat? You are not ashamed when you pick a knife to kill an animal that loves its life because you want to eat it. What's wrong with you? An animal that loves its life. When you are friendly with the animal, see how the animal treats you. A man traveled. Several years. And when he returned, his dog was running around him. You could see the happiness of the dog to see the master again. And you pick a knife and say, you are slaughtering it for Christmas. Why? Please think about it, oh. Human beings are so greedy and heartless. If you don't eat that animal, they know we'll call you a person. We think, say, you're day wise. That's the story. All about three new revenue measures to be considered by parliament. Take me to the last two pages. Last two pages. You see, they are showing you how they are going to tax you. Next page. Watch this. This is to increase the excise duty on wine. 
malt drinks and spirits like apiteshi, brukutu, kebasho. And impose excise duty on sweetened beverages like what? Fanta, Coca-Cola, and the rest. And electronic cigarettes and electronic liquids to increase revenue. The bill has been opposed by various labor groups and unions. Why are you opposing it? These things are killing you. And we want to make it very, very disgusting for you to go and take. When you go to buy cigarettes, they write on the tin, this is poison. They write that you can give you cancer. You still go and buy it and you are smoking. So we increase the price. When the price goes so high, you can't buy it. You have to go and steal it. And you know what will happen to you when you steal and you are caught. This is the black pot. When we return, we got more. But I have a quote for you. Hey! Wayo! This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. And my name, Black Rasta. Remember, we are on YouTube, and our YouTube page is waiting for your subscription. We are called the Black Empire Media. Please subscribe to our YouTube page and click on the notification button so you will not miss any of the wonderful stories we have for you. This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo. And we are live on Pan-African TV. Africa's only Pan-African TV. We are also live on Loud Silence TV. This is us speaking truth to power. The voice of the people. Come here. Next story. Watch the story. America threatens Uganda over LGBTQI+. A couple of days ago, the Ugandan government, in fact... Led by your wary Museveni, your wary Kaguta Museveni, said that any gay caught in that country would go to jail for 10 years. In fact, even if you are not gay and you come out and say that you feel like you are gay, you will go to jail for 10 years. In fact, even if you are not gay, and you dress like gay, you will go to jail for 10 years. Let alone you are caught. One man kissing another man. That one, I don't know. Hear me now. Now, your wary Kaguta Museveni is the president. In fact, long years in the presidency. Ugandans are getting fed up with him, especially that they believe that Bobby Wine had won the last elections or he was cheated in the last elections, whatever it is. Today, we are not talking about Bobby Wine and elections. We're talking about LGBTQI. They passed the bill. Boom. And things are going to happen. But America is not happy. Come here. Let's see how angry America is. New anti-LGBTQ plus law. U.S. threatens Uganda with possible economic sanctions. Wow. The United States has warned of uh, 
possible economic sanctions if Uganda's anti-lesbians, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer legislation is assigned into law. The United Nations and the United States led calls Wednesday, March 22, for Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, to reject what they have labeled an appalling anti-gay bill. We would have a look at whether or not there might be repercussions that we would have to take, perhaps in an economic way, should this law actually get passed. John Kirby, spokesperson for the National Security Council, is quoted as saying, dash it away and come here. Come here. This is what I don't like. Me, I am not gay. I am yet to understand what it is to even say somebody is gay. Today, I'm told that it's a mental illness. Tomorrow, I'm told, oh, it's a choice. The next day, I'm told it's a combination of the two. From my readings, some time ago, it was accepted as mental illness in the whole world. It's just in the mid-1900s that America took it out of the list of mental illness. So common sense will tell you that if some countries still see homosexuality as mental illness, the best place to take homosexuals to is the psychiatric hospital, the doctor. If these countries see it as a choice, then they will come out to unleash judgment on these people. But first, trying to find out if it is accepted or not in almost all the countries in Africa, except about two, homosexuality is so frowned on. Even in America, it's a controversial issue. It's just recently that some countries are advocating seriously for gay rights and all that. I have said it time and again. There are some instances where I have met gays and lesbians who are better than some clergy in my country. I have gone to some countries and interacted with some gays. And some of them are wiser than some presidents in Africa, like my president in Ghana. There are gays who are far wiser than Nana Kufuado. That's true. A wise man will not build a cathedral when vaccines are short for babies. A wise man will not be building a cathedral and be running around begging for money when the country is sinking. A wise man will not be building a cathedral to praise his God when the whole economy has sunk to the ground. Let's, let's, let's speak truth to power. In this case, if Nana Kufuado is standing on my left, and there's a gay guy who's standing on my right. I will run to the gay and embrace him. And leave this man who has saddled my country in debt. And only God knows how many people have died. Because of the debt he has saddled my country in. Let's speak truth to power. Wallahi. Wallahi. Hear me now. But what I don't like about these gay advocates. Is what they are trying to do to Uganda. But I'm also happy that is happening. And I'll tell you why in just a few seconds. Listen. You cannot force people to accept what you think is right. Uganda is a sovereign country. There are things they accept in their country that you don't accept, like polygamy. That's the commonest example I can use. Will they ever come to America and say, hey, the Americans have passed a law against polygamy that anybody who has uh, 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 two wives will go to jail for 10 years. Do you think Uganda can come and say, America, we are going to punish you for doing that? No. Why? Shika. Kudi Ega. L'argent. Money. Their economy is buoyant. Now look at the statement. 
They said they would visit Uganda with economic harm. Economic neglect. It hurts me that African countries are still depending on the West to eat. Yet we have all the soil that we can plant our crops. So any Tom, Dick and Harry who is a terrorist in disguise can come to us and threaten us with economy. What is the difference between what this Nigerian politician, Ike Ekerimadu, did to the poor boy on the streets, exploiting him, then, and what the West is doing to Africa? You see, I brought that comparison. It's the same thing. It's an exploitative world. Whoever has the cash controls the tune from the piper. I don't like that bit. Every time Africa wants to move some direction that America doesn't like, hey, we are bringing economic sanctions. Look what happened in Kenya. They've always hated homosexuality. They don't want it. Oh, American leaders went there and bam, 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 before we realized they passed a gay order that, oh, right now, you can be gay, you are cool, you are all right. And America sent them aid. Today, let Uganda come back and say, oh, that law is a stupid law. Now we accept homosexuality. America will send aid there. Are you trying to make everybody gay? Is that what you want? Or am I getting it all wrong? What really is it? What really is it? Gays and lesbians are in the minority. Fine. Fair enough. I think trying to let the world gradually understand what it is to say LGBTQI+. Plus is the way forward rather than this Herculean force. During the World Cup, that plane that had gay flags and all that landing, what happened? They refused to let it land. They had to go and land elsewhere and bring a plane without that. It's disrespectful to try to control a sovereign nation. That's what I think. It doesn't mean I am fighting gays or lesbians. No. As I said, some gays are wiser than my president in Ghana. There are some gays who are wiser than some African presidents. There are some gays who are better than Malams. There are some gays who are wiser and would go to heaven and some clergy who rot in hell. Be careful. Be economically independent or else every Tom, Dick and Harry will stick his leg into your business. When we return, we have more. Hey! Wayo! This is the Black Pot, aka Kuku Show Nomo, and here we speak truth to power. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called the Black Empire Media, and click on the notification button so you will not miss any of the stories we're talking about. Let leave Africa alone. Let Africa grow at its own pace. And if we say leave Africa alone, 
African leaders must also respect Africa and stop taking donations from any Tom, Dick and Harry. After all, he who feeds you controls you. Thomas Sankara said that. Come here. Next story. Tamale Hospital, West Hospital in Ghana. You know the Tamale Hospital? It's in Tamale. That's the hospital. That's where I was born. You see that long building at the back? On the third floor, that was where I was born. The window there. You see the one that has only one window there? Second to last, that's where I was born. On the second day of September, 1974. It was at 7.20. PM, and I weighed 5.5 pounds at birth in that hospital. It's so dear to my heart. Show me the story. Tamale Teaching Hospital ranked worst performing hospital in the northern region. Hey, listen, leave it there. The northern region has a hospital deficit, a doctor deficit. A nurse deficit. It is a hospital. <sighs> Jesus. It's a hospital that has taken care of so many different people. From before I was born. Several tens of years before I was born. So when I talk about this hospital, I feel so emotional. Recently, they ran short of very important medicines, including oxygen. So patients were going in there and dying. Patients who needed oxygen, nurses could not do anything. They just opened the windows and started fanning them, hoping that some air would go through their nostrils. They died. This hospital, and is the biggest in the whole northern region. This you know why? This is a hospital that has been there for a very long time. Now, if the northern region has some of the worst hospitals in terms of infrastructure and in terms of people working in there, the staff, then it means that this is the worst hospital in the whole Ghana. Are you able to get the mathematics? Some of the worst hospitals are in the northern region. It's an area that is so deprived. The area I come from. And if this is the worst hospital among the west in the west area, then it's the worst in the whole Ghana. People are dying in this hospital. Common oxygen. They couldn't get. You know who was supplying them? Oxygen. One Malam Jato at the market, Tamali market, Abu Abu market, Malam Jato was the one who was supplying the whole hospital. Where Malam Jato is a trader, supplying the hospital with oxygen. One day they went to Malam Jato and said, Well, I have been here, then I have a cane. Put now on the cane. Then I have, well, I the cane. It's finished. And people started dying. An individual at the Tamale market, Abu Abu market, was the one supplying this hospital with oxygen. Today is ranked as what? The worst performing hospital in the northern region. Roll the story. The Tamale teaching hospital has been ranked the worst performing hospital in the northern region. The only tertiary health facility in the northern region was ranked 19th out of 19 hospitals in the region. Hallelujah. Come here. Did you see that? The Tamale Teaching Hospital scored E or unsatisfactory in 11 of 22 performance indicators in the 2022 best performing hospitals ranking by the Northern Regional Health Directorate. The 22 performance indicators include the performance of the 19 hospitals. Eh? In institutional maternal mortality, stillbirth, institutional mortality, and deliveries, amongst others. My brother, my sister, key indicators.
and they failed. I pray that those who be going to the Tamale Hospital because they have no other place to go, may their lives be protected and saved. You know why I'm crying for this hospital? There are other private hospitals in Tamale that are so disgusting. My mother died in one of those. Tamale something something hospital. They didn't also have oxygen. She went there and when she started having spasms, gas, gas, oh, oxygen, oh, doc, doc, the oxygen is finished. Oh. And the young woman passed on two years back or so. If even their private hospitals are that bad and they have beaten this hospital, then you are on your own. And the people in Tamale will be more interested in who wins the elections and chieftaincy and will not look at these key indicators of life. Dash. Next thing. The last thing I will look at, I'm going to just spend two minutes on this. And I'm done. After talking about the people of Tamale, I'm in Accra, I'm going to La. La. They say La means fire. And they also say La means blood. So depending on whether they say La or La, one is blood, one is fire. Whether it is blood or fire, they are both important. Look at it. ECG disconnection exercise. La residents rush to clear debts. If they are not threatened, they will never go. You use electricity. Please be responsible. Who do you want to come and pay your electricity bills for you? Who do you want to pay your electricity bills for you? Scores of customers of the electricity company of Ghana at La Accra Monday boycotted all activities and stormed the company's offices to pay their outstanding bills. This is after officials of ECG, as part of a month-long revenue generation exercise, descended on the community to disconnect customers owing it. The company's officials from the Makola district team, uh, Accra East region, told the Ghana news agency that some residents owed bills for months and years, with others engaged in bypass illegal connection go to nima this ramadan nima i challenge you if you have illegal connection well lie your ramadan will not be accepted so disconnect it if you have connected illegal water in nima in ashima you are a muslim disconnect it or your ramadan is useless it's stealing that's what we are talking about brethren Hey, if La people are not paying, you might sit back and say, oh, why are La people doing this? But Parliament itself owed 13 million. Our own Parliament House was not paying for electricity. The whole airport, they had to disconnect it. It all went dark. So when it comes to La, it's, it's like child's play. But please, if you don't pay electricity, they won't be able to make money to serve you. Again, why don't you do this meters that are prepaid so everybody would have that so that you pay from what you consume? I leave it here. Dash it away. Well, my name is Black Rasta and I want to say thank you so much. I appreciate you and I love you. Remember, our numbers are scrolling on the screen. Talk to us. Let's do business. Also, Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's called the Black Empire Media. Click on the notification button and everything is everything. I love you. Hey! Woyo! Come on! Come on! <laughs>